Hello everyone! My time at Porsche came out on Steam just a few hours ago and a lot of people are wondering what the game is about, so I figured I'd do a quick video giving it a quick review. The first thing I want to say is that if you liked Stardew Valley, you're gonna like this one. And a lot of people have been telling me as they watch me play that the art style really reminds them of Breath of the Wild. Plus the charming atmosphere really gives us a Stardew Valley feel to it. Now when you start the game you're left with a tiny decrepit workshop that it's up to you to repair, upgrade, and then expand upon through hours of hard work, crafting, and completing commissions. There are so many things to do in a game like this that you'll actually find yourself overwhelmed and running out of time each and every day because there's just so much you're trying to do all at once. And in a world this big and beautiful, it's really hard to know how to prioritize yourself. Whether you're picking up commissions to make some massive profit, planting the next mega crop, trying to catch those stupid fish, cheating on your wife, exploring those rooftops looking for more of those hidden treasure chests, mining for ore and valuable artifacts in the mines, trying to fight your way through the numerous dungeons, or just simply exploring this absolutely beautiful world, trying to get your greedy hands on as many forgeables as you possibly can. You definitely won't find yourself with any shortage of things to do. I'm already 30 hours into this game and I haven't even scratched this surface yet. I still don't even know the true scale of this game. But let's take a step back and look at what's essentially the core of this game, the crafting. You own a workshop after all, that is the core of everything. This is your workbench. It is basically your main piece that you're going to be using the most. From here you can craft any number of things, whether it be an upgraded sword, better tools for better harvesting, pieces that make up your bigger projects, such as cars and water wheels, furniture for your house which does give your character pretty nice upgrades, and just an assortment of weird and funny things. Some of these are good for commissions that are worth a ton of money, some of them are just fun to wear. Now in order to make most of these, obviously you need to continually get other stuff and upgrade those too, like saws, that way you can cut wood into planks, furnaces so you can smelt that ore into bars, and bigger furnaces and bigger furnaces again. Everything in this game, you've really got to work towards and earn. It doesn't give you anything. You want to make a furnace? Well, you're going to have to work towards that. You want to upgrade your weapons? You're going to have to work towards that. 30 hours into this game, I've basically got level 2 everything. There's still more levels to go, that's for sure. Level 2, that's it. I've upgraded three major things. I've gone from this tiny little yard with a house with built-in ventilation to this expansive level 2 house with a wife in it. The wife is not included. When you start out, when you're trying to craft your first few precious items, you'll be reduced to simply picking stuff up off the ground in order to make those first few things. After many hours of hard work, you'll be able to smash the biggest rocks and the tallest of trees, hopefully finding some of those rare and valuable gems along the way. Don't feel like doing any of that? Well, just grab yourself a couple of caterpillars and try your hand at fishing in one of the many fishing spots scattered throughout the world. There's different fish at every location. Some of them you have to work to unlock. The fishing itself is frustratingly difficult, but rewarding. The more valuable the fish, the harder it is to catch. And you will spend some hours trying to catch those fish, believe me. I admittedly haven't spent much time fishing in this one. It is quite fun. It is quite challenging. I've only seen maybe four kinds of fish. There are a ton more out there and I haven't even fished in all the areas I can. Now, if you want to build relationships like anything in this game, you're going to have to work towards it. Your common player will have these options. You can chat with them. You can give gifts. You can spar. Rock, paper, scissors. Chatting is a simple way to get to know someone. It will reward you small amounts of friendship points. Gifts will reward friendship points depending on how much they like it. If they don't like it, you will lose friendship points and that really sucks. You can play rock, paper, scissors, which is always fun. And interestingly enough, you can spar with everyone. Beating someone at sparring will reward you with a small amount of money and some friendship points. Be warned though, if you lose, you will lose some money. And some of the characters are very strong. As you can see, I'm already level 22, but I'm already having a pretty tough time fighting Sam. So if you're just starting out, avoid Sam. She will beat you up and I will laugh at you. Now in total, there are approximately 10 male and 10 female characters that you can have a relationship with. And the menu is even kind enough to include all sorts of useful information. You can scroll through, see how many people are in the town. I haven't met half these people, don't know who they are, but they're out here somewhere. And the more you get to know someone, the more hearts they get. They become your friend, your buddy. You can marry them eventually. They'll become your soulmate at 10 hearts. And interestingly enough, you can get more information. It will give you the background of everyone, their date of birth, their height and weight for some reason. Importantly, it gives you their preferences, the gifts they love, the gifts they hate. That way, when you give them gifts, you don't have to physically remember that. You can just check their menu to see what they like. Also, you get their relationship perks. As a friend, she gives you a gift sometimes like any good friend would. Wink, wink, friends out there. And as a wife, I get a 25% discount at Sophie's Ranch, which is really all I want from her. It does take a lot of work to get someone to be your husband or wife. It takes a lot of gifts, a lot of talking to, a lot of time. But finally, all the way in year two, Emily is my loving wife. 
Now, once you become good enough friends with someone, you can start going on what they call play dates, and eventually that would turn into real dates. These give you all sorts of fun mini games to play, and you get extra friendship points with that, and you want all of those you can get because they are hard to earn. And they do eventually have random events where you have to help the person accomplish a task or fix a problem they're having for easy extra points that way. The social system in this game is really well designed with a lot to it. You gotta work at it, and I understand you can date multiple people at once, and I'm always all for that. Apparently, they'll even get jealous of each other. This poor guy never learned how to fly. Fun fact, if you visit the neighbor's farm, you can steal their birds. But now what would a game like this be without the farming, of course? There's different crops that can be grown in different seasons. Yes, there's different seasons. Four of them, of course, like there is in real life. Each one somehow more beautiful than the last. These are actually a really good way of making money. They don't actually take any energy to put into the ground so you don't waste stamina. All you gotta do is plant them, wait a few days, harvest them, sell them. Easy profit. Eventually, you'll be able to get these bigger planter boxes where you can simply grow trees and they just give you fruit every few days, so that's even easier. The problem is you have to make an individual planter box for every single crop. They aren't that bad to make, you can do that fairly early on and start making your crops. Eventually, I will have this giant entire area full of valuable pumpkins. And interestingly, there are different merchants all throughout the game. The farm store, fittingly, will sell you everything related to the farm. Now, even these shops change season to season. In spring, you can buy the pumpkin pies, which Emily loves, but in summer, you get hot peppers instead. And different merchants buy different things, so that's something you need to pay attention to. A farm store will buy farm-related things. The clothing store buys clothing-related things. I think you get the point. And interestingly, there's a market price for things. The market prices fluctuate. So obviously you want to pay attention to those. Buy when it's low, sell when it's high. And that really adds an entire element to the game in itself. Paying attention to those prices and you have to buy and sell on different days. Be careful what you buy and sell and how much of it. Quick note, this game has already got over 50 reviews on Steam. All of them positive so far. Every single one. This is a game that very much rewards exploration, and I love that. Once you start the game, you'll immediately see chests hidden up on top of walls, behind houses, in bushes. It encourages you to explore. It rewards you for exploring. You'll find very few invisible boundaries on this game. You can crawl all over rooftops, all over walls. Look for hidden secrets everywhere. I really get annoyed when you play games. You try and jump on rooftops or ledges, wherever, and you can't because there's an invisible barrier in this way. Well, this game has so much freedom to it, I could literally crawl all the way up the roofs to the very upper end of town if I want to. And one day I might, because I can't help but want to explore this game. I want to see if I can get up in that tower, I want to see if I can get in that tower, I want to see if I can get up in whatever that is. I want to see if I can get up in that. The mines are somewhere where you're going to be spending a lot of time. The initial one you enter is going to cost 80 goals for a week, it's worth it. In the abandoned ruins you'll find vast caverns to explore. The goal of these is to mine as much of that ore as you can. You'll find it on the ground, in different areas, here's a big deposit here. I would spend all day just smashing this, getting as much as I could, because I need to smelt that into bars for my wonderful creations. But while you're here, don't forget you have an artifact scanner. Use that, simply look around, once you find those glowing orbs in the ground, tunnel towards them, and you'll be rewarded with a nice prize once you get to them. These abandoned runes are crucial to your success. You're going to need a lot of ore to build a lot of different things, and a lot of the artifacts you can find are pretty rare, so if you get them, hold on to them because you're going to need them for some of those big creations down the road. Now, if you're anything like me, your first thought when playing this game is going to be, what happens when you kill the rainbow donkeys? Well, that is the start of your combat experience in this game, and the combat in this game is actually really well done and really in-depth, although very, very challenging. Starting out, you're simply going to be murdering a lot of these whimsical creatures because you need their parts. Eventually, you'll find yourself against stronger creatures. Eventually, you'll find your way in the dungeons, which are very challenging, but worth it if you can manage to fight your way all the way through. Be warned though, if you're not a high enough level, these will murder you in a big hurry. Speaking of leveling, as you gain experience and level up throughout this game, you can choose what direction you want to go. There's a whole row dedicated to battle, one to gathering, and one to social. Obviously, I'm not a very social person, I just like to hit things with my sword. Again, the leveling is challenging. I'm level 22, 30 hours into the game. I've put some points into battle, I'm maybe halfway to getting battle complete, maybe a quarter of the way to gathering, and I put no points into social. These are very well thought out and weighted, that way the higher level you get, the cooler perks you get. Starting out with some of these, you'll maybe get a maximum health increase by 10%, which is helpful in itself, stamina plus 10%, and at the end, you get a 100% better chance of finding rare items from trees, 100% better chance of finding rare items from mining. I definitely want those perks, but it's going to take a long time before I get the experience I need to level all the way up to there. 
These dungeons are full of rewards that are worth your time, but also full of traps that can kill you really quickly. Make your way through these annoyingly hard dungeons and you'll be rewarded with a boss fight. And it definitely feels like they took a page out of Dark Souls book when they thought about designing these bosses. They are very hard but very rewarding if you manage to beat them. So in summary, this is a game where the developers truly care. They want to make a really good game. I've been playing it from a very early version and it's been developing in all the right ways. You can see the developers clearly didn't cut any corners. The amount of effort and detail that goes into a game like this is massive. The more you play, the more of that you'll find. A quick look at the graphics and visuals will tell you pretty much everything you need to know about this game. You can see they really put in the effort. And the price of this game at 20 US dollars is absolutely worth it. You'll get tons of hours of content as long as you like games like this. Like I said at the beginning, if you like a game like Stardew Valley, you're going to like this one. I'll post a link to this game on Steam in the description below. I'm going to continue to make videos on this game because, well, I just can't stop playing it and I really want to finish it. I want to see what's in that chest out on that island. I don't know how to get there, but I'm going to. So other than that, I hope you like this one. Thank you all for watching.